This is Kevin McCain again, and we're, this is with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. And this is for the um, beginning drawing session three class. Again, we're dealing with values and form shadows. We've already talked a little bit about using a finger swing to create values, doing a feathered stroke, or what some people call gradated stroke. There's, there's, other, there's other terms for, the, for that type of gradation. It gets a little lighter on either side. Um, so I, I like the, the gradated stroke, I, I like that term, but you know, there's many, there's many terms for it. Um, so we have a, a drawing here. Now this was one that was done in class. I did as a demo for the, with the students. And, uh, we've got a lot of light on here so that the camera does really well in picking stuff up, but it's also blowing out some of the darks in here just a little bit. So keep that in mind as we're talking about this. So. Um, so this is not, this is, you, it's got a lot of the information there. It's obviously not a, a nice, super finished drawing, but it, it's, it's getting close to that finished level. So there's enough information where we can see it. Uh, it's not enough for me to, you know, put it in a show or something like that or on the wall or something, but we do have the form shadows. Now there's one thing we're going to talk about the form shadows, but the one thing I want to point out here is this right here. This is a big no, no. So along this edge, I mean, you'd want to erase this and get rid of it, but along this edge, you can still see my original line for my circle. And so we have all these values and then slam, it hits that, that dark outline. Whenever you have a dark outline, it's going to flatten out your object. It looks like a cartoon or something out of a coloring book. And so what I'd have to do is I'd have to lighten this line until this value of the line was the same as the light value next to it. So it wouldn't disappear entirely but it would melt into this value over here. And I'd have to work with that because right now it's a dark outline. So understand that you want to avoid outlines at all costs. Um, there's also a little bit of that going on over here. This would have to be light and that's also considered an outline. Uh, and so again, I'd want to work with that. So there's some things that you'd want to do to finish this thing out really nice. But we still have, we have our light values here. The light's coming from this direction. We have our light values, then we have our middle values are through here. And the middle values have a lighter side and the middle values have a darker side. And then right here is our highlight. Now again, I can make this a little bit more clear, but there's a light little highlight right there. Um, if I thought again that I needed to make it clearer that it's a highlight, I could get my little kneaded eraser. I've got one over here just to the side of me. I can take this kneaded eraser and I can go ahead and lighten that highlight like so uh, to make it a little bit brighter. So again we have, this is also has a little bit of, um, I've seen if I, I might lower some of the lighting here. I think I will. There we go. I think that, um, I think that will help. So we've got so we've got, that, that. now it's not blowing out, we had so much light it was actually hitting off the graphite. And graphite's a little shiny, so it was making it even worse. So again, we have that dark line, we'd want to get rid of all the good stuff we talked about. We have light values, light middle values, dark middle values, and highlight. There's a little highlight right here. Um, then we have, when we hit the, so we have three values in the light family. Light values, light middle values, middle dark middle values. So the middle values are one of the families, but it has a light and dark side. So there's light values, middle values, and highlight. But the middle values have a light side, they have a dark side. So, and then in the shadows, we have three types of form shadows that we deal with. And remember that the darkest part is where the light and shadow meet. And you get this, sort of this dark ribbon that wraps around the object, and that's called a core shadow. So then from the core shadow, it gets lighter into the dark tones. And then the lights that are lighter than the dark tones are called reflected light. We've got reflected light up here, and we've got reflected light down here. But remember that these are part of the shadow family. So this, the reflected light, this looks light. It even looks as light as something over here, but it's actually not. It looks really light because of the, of the core shadow, the cast shadow, the dark tones. They're all making this look lighter than what it actually is. Where if we took this little piece and moved it up into here, it'd actually be darker than this and it doesn't look that way. It's an illusion. Remember that we are creating illusions. And so we have to keep in mind that everything over here has to be darker than everything over here. There's times it doesn't look like that. This looks really bright. 
and it is an illusion. This over here is darker than that over there. It looks lighter because this is darker and that's darker. But if I put it on the on white paper over here, it would it would look like a, a sort of a dark gray dot. Um, so again, we have core shadows the darkest, dark tones are lighter, and and reflected light that's the lightest in the shadow family. So we have six. So we have the the six in something that's round. Okay. And then we have something we if something's flat like this cube, we're only going to have five flat objects whether it be uh, a wall or whether it be a cube or whether it be a 50 faceted, you know, you know 52 facets on a ring or something. Again, if it's flat planes, they don't have core shadows. Core shadows are only for round-esque objects. So if, if, if you have a mounted piece of cloth, it's going to have a core shadow. If you have like a banana or something, you know, like an apple or something that's round, there's going to be a core shadow or a pear or anything like that. But core shadows are not on flat objects. So this only has five values. We have a light value. We have a middle value up here. We have a highlight right there along that edge. That's three. And then we have our dark tones over here because we have no core shadow so this are dark tones that's four and our dark tones are getting lighter as it comes down because this is reflected light that's five okay so light values highlight middle values dark values in the dark values there is reflected light now remember we talked about core or pardon me not core shadows let me get that correct we talked about form shadows and we talk about form shadows a little differently than we talk about cast shadow because cast shadow is just blocking the light the form shadow is actually making the object feel, you know, feel that form, make it feel round, make it feel flat. The cast shadow is just the object blocking the light. But here's the interesting part, and we can see it up here. When things are about the same value, and this and the cube, though they were not exactly the exact same, uh, the, the sphere was a little bit darker. They were close enough that this rule does apply. If you have a cast shadow on the same color object or the same value object or similar in this case they were similar the cast shadow is darker so this right here is darker here than it is in the core shadow hopefully the camera has to tries to rationalize or tries to uh, take values um, and sort of equal them out because cameras can't see as, as good as our eyes uh, if you saw this in real life you can see this is actually darker by like almost a full step of value than the core shadow Whereas I'm looking on, on the little, I think it still looks darker. But so, cast shadows are darker. Now, they're not darker everywhere because the cast shadow has reflected light. There's values in the, in the cast shadow. We want to we wanna be clear about that. But in general, the darkest part of the cast shadow will be darker than the darkest part of the object. Okay? And so, now, uh, we talked maybe a little bit about this. And I could have darkened this because you said, well, cast shadow should be darker than core shadows. Because core shadows are the darkest of the form shadows, but the cast shadow is darker. So this right here, this little line on the outside, that's a key, that's where the object is picking up its own cast shadow. So if I want if I wanted that to be true, if I wanted that to ring true, or to follow that rule, and this is the cast shadow, I would have to darken this enough so this is darker than that. Now, as as a as an artist, a lot of times we'll be like, look, we can skew things a little bit to make them look more three-dimensional. So I probably wouldn't want to go this dark because if I get this too dark, it'll start to flatten out as well. So I got, you know, you, you're, you got to walk a line, some, some people will say. And so that, that's what, where it takes, you know, it, it takes time with drawing and painting uh, is creating these illusions. And that's what they are, they're illusions. And we as the artist, we as the magicians, you, you might say, the illusionists, we are the ones in control. We can make decisions to make things look a little better than what they actually do in reality. And photographers would do this all the time. Uh, nowadays they use Photoshop, but they used to go into the studio. They would do what was called dodging and burning and all these sorts of techniques to make things feel like they had more dimension, that, that, that three-dimensional quality. Um, so anyways, there's something, uh, one last thing I want to talk about here, and that is we have what are called occlusion shadows. Now people will usually put the occlusion shadow in the uh, cat along with the cast shadow family. Occlusion shadows are where things touch. So this right here where the sphere touches the cube 
and it is again if you could see this in real life I, I don't know that you can tell the difference because the way it's averaging the values but this is this is the darkest of any place on here same thing here right along here that where the where the the ground meets the cube the, where that hits that there's gonna be very little light under there that's gonna be an occlusion shadow okay so again it's it, what occlusion shadows show is they show that things are touching um, this also is an occlusion shadow now there's a darkness right here along this corner that I'd have to get rid of because that flattens stuff out. So there's little nuances like that that you'd be like, well, why is that so dark? Is that touching something? No. Why is this little blotch of, of, of dark right there? It makes no sense. So we'd have to either take it out or, or, or make it a gradation so that, you know, if, you know, whatever we would have to do, it depends on what we are looking at, what you're seeing. But so we have, again, we have the, the six form shadows if it's round, five form shadows if it's flat. And then we have the cast shadow, and in the cast shadow, if something is touching something else, we have occlusion shadows. Occlusion shadows are what causes those dark lines. These, these lines between my fingers are caused by occlusion shadows. The little, the little lines or wrinkles between on my knuckles, again, those are caused by occlusion shadows. The lines around my nails, again, occlusion shadows. Those are very important to understand, the occlusion shadow. Um, and then again, now we haven't done, I didn't do as much here. This was just kind of put in there kind of really haphazardly at the end. Uh, but we can see it here. There's value again, gradations in the shadows. Look for them. Shadows are not flat. Uh, they're going to, they get sharper. So again, I didn't do this on this, on this one, but if I, if I wanted to, to kind of take this to the next level, I'd make this edge right here sharper here and then get softer and softer and softer because the edges of shadows get softer as they travel away from the object. But this is a good uh, drawing showing form shadows. Uh, again, we'd want to get rid of that line. But So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we uh, have talked about the, the uh, value scale. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the value scale in here. And this is just the one off the wall that we have here in the class. Now, again, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this over here as our value scale. This is an eight step. The only reason I did this is this is to show that uh, you don't have all the steps with graphite. This is a graphite value scale. And so the darks in the graphite are not near as dark as the, the, uh, the darks in the charcoal. And so it was, it was to show that you're actually, you're getting more compressed values. Um, with, a, with graphite, you would still do a 10 step value scale, but you can't go as dark. So you're losing a little bit in the darks. Um, this is a uh, graphite, not graphite, pardon me. This is charcoal. Uh, and if I had one that was in, in oil paint, oil paint would have the greatest range. Black and white oil paintings have much more, they have more contrast than even charcoal. But still, this right here gives us a nice 10-step uh, value scale. Whenever we're looking at objects, we want to ask ourselves, what is, what is that value? If I'm looking at a shadow, I want to go, where's the shadow value? Is it down here, up here, is it all the way down here? What is it? And so with a 10 step value scale, we have 10 at the top, 10 is, is the lightest paper. And this paper is kind of an off white. You can see it next to this and next to that. This has, it's sort of a creamy white color. Uh, that's why some people, you know, if, if you get like a dark antique white, you're losing a little bit of value in your drawing at the very, very beginning because of the fact it's antique white. Um, but we, we, we wanna go ahead and observe that we have, these are supposed to be even steps of value going down the value scale. Okay, this is one I just we, that I just drew up. Um, again, the ten is white. The one is as dark as we can go. But I encourage people to have a, to get a value scale if you're really serious about drawing and keep it right next to you for the first six months. So you can, you're always comparing what's this value against that value, what's that value against that value. And in the class, when we get back to value drawing, I'll start calling out numbers. Hey, this is a such and such, this is a, a number three value, and you have to understand where that is in the value scale. Or this is a number seven value. Where is that on the value scale? Or this is something that looks like it's between an eight and a nine or something. Where's that value? Well, if that's nine and that's eight, it's somewhere between those two values right there. So get to know your value scale. You use it all the time. Now, most of your objects, there's going to be little half steps and sometimes quarter steps. If I've got something that's really light, like we've got in the studio of the light clay sphere. Um, the darkest dark in that light clay sphere might be a six, and the lightest light in the highlight might be a 10. Most objects don't have a lot more than five steps of value. If I had a black uh, number eight ball, it's gonna start from the very, very darkest dark, and the lightest light on there 
uh, might be a step five or a step six if we count the highlight. I, that's that's what's kind of crazy. So like, oh, that highlight's totally bright on that black on that black ball. No, it's not. <laughs> if you put it on an object, you'd see how dark it is. It looks light because everything else is so much darker. So again, we're back to those illusion things. But five or six steps of value is uh, more is is as much as any object has. It, depending on the light scenario, we might have a, a low lighting scenario where we only have four steps of value. Now you might ask, well, if you only got four steps of value, how can we have six form shadows? Well, again, we've got we've got third steps and we got half steps. So every object is going to have again, you know, those six steps of form shadow if it's round and five if it's flat. Okay, so that's the value scale. So what I'm going to do for you now is I'm actually going to show you a drawing that we're going to do, and I'm going to do a drawing of a cone using our, our five pencils here. So we've got, let's go ahead and see how far I can bring this down and not cut it off. Um, Cause this is really far away from me. So it's, it's kind of weird. Uh, sorry, shook the table a little bit there when I was moving up, but I wanted to scoot in here so I can reach this. We've got ourselves a four inch, a four H pencil. We also have a 2H pencil, as far as that goes. All right, we have a, uh, sorry, that was a 2B. We have a 2H and a 2B, we have a 4H, we have, of course, the 4B, and then we have our HB. So this will be our five pencils that we're gonna be using over here, okay? I'm also gonna have my kneaded eraser if I need it. <laughs> and sorry, very bad joke. And we've got the white uh, eraser if we need that. Okay. So again, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and and start this drawing. And yeah, I think that's gonna work for us. Hold on a moment. I've got the. Uh, I've got my cone set up, and I'm gonna I'm going to going to include that. Uh, I'm gonna send it to you guys. So you, if you want to do the cone, though, I'm actually gonna prefer that you try the the uh, the sphere and the cube. But I, I want to show you how this is gonna translate. So I've got a cone, and I'm gonna go ahead and I've made the cone where I started with a triangle. I started with this triangle here, and then the triangle has an ellipse. So I've got the triangle and the ellipse. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with where does the shadow stop? Okay, so we've got, I've got a slight, we've got a slight angle. Now you never wanna chop it right in half, even if it is right in half. Uh, and this one's close, but it's not quite. It's actually a little bit more there's more shadow and there's, uh, or pardon me, there's less shadow and more light. I'm going to start with my HB. Uh, again, I made, I started this with a triangle, marked the ma major axis points. I had a midline here along that midline. I then marked the minor axis points. This was the bottom of the triangle and I constructed an ellipse. Um, and then from here, we're going to turn this into this, this line drawing or contour drawing into a, uh, a value drawing. So I'm going to start with, uh, again, I'm going to start with the, um, maybe I'll do this with, uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can reposition this. I'm going to probably use a little bit of a wrist swing using the HP pencil. And I always start by darkening for the shadows. Now this is going to be in real time, so if you feel like you need to, you know, uh, you know, fast forward a little bit, if you want to just kind of see the process, I, I completely understand. Um, and I'll be turning this uh, different directions because once once we've got the uh, the once I've got it drawn, well then I, again I can start tilting my paper. We're no longer dealing with angles. Uh, again, I'm using a wrist swing. I'm just putting in 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn this this way, be a little bit easier. So again, I can, I can turn my paper if need be. Uh, now I'm going a different direction with my lines. I'm still using a finger, um, not a finger swing, but a wrist swing. And I'm doing a, what we, we talked, I talked a little bit about a rough in where you want just some rough value. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, the reason I, I decided to crosshatch this, you will call, we'll say, what's crosshatching? That's when you cross a line, go a different direction. Uh, it's because I had so many lines, I didn't take enough time that I, I decided to go this way to counteract all the lines going this way because again I didn't take a time I didn't take my time and I'm gonna have to rush through this a little bit because otherwise you guys would be sitting here and bored to sleep watching me for 45 minutes while I'm trying to get this done okay so this is gonna be the beginning maybe I'll even do uh, I'm doing a little bit of an elbow swing now you might say well why would you do that well it, it, I can cover more area more quickly Remember, that's the thing about the elbow swing. And this is a rough end, meaning I, I, this is, you know, I'm going to be going over and over and over this. So as long as I take some sort of care with it, I'll be fine. Uh, if I don't take any care with it, well, then I'm in a, I'm in a whole heap of trouble. But as I, as I look at this object, there's like, I'm going to do some mapping. So there's like reflected light through here. There's um, there's a core shadow, and the core shadow, just like the uh, the cone opens up, the core shadow opens up. So it gets it's like a it's like a little sliver of a triangle, sort of that core shadow a little bit. And so again, I, I've still got my HP pencil. I'm going to darken the basic value shape. So this is going to go darker. Uh, this is supposed to be the core shadow, so it's supposed to be the darkest. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to go ahead and put in the the dark tones. So we've got a little crumble there that I need to get out of there. So I'm going to grab my kneaded eraser and and get that crumble off of there. Okay, there's a little bit of a crumble of an eraser on there. Uh, so that pulled that off and now I can go ahead and so I'm gonna fill this whole thing in because this is the dark tone but I'm gonna leave the reflected light so we're gonna leave that reflected light alone now the other thing is this is gonna get darker up here getting lighter down here because of reflected light as well so as I'm doing this I want to make sure that I'm dealing with the fact that as I come up towards the tip it's gonna be darker and I'm, I'm turning this all the way upside down uh, using a, and I'm jumping between, I was doing an elbow swing, now I'm doing a wrist swing. Uh, I'm going to do whatever I need to. If I, so I came out of the lines here too much, if I, if I, you know, there's a point at which, uh, usually I wouldn't do that this early, but let's just keep it clean going, you know, as we go forward. So again, I'm going to go ahead, there's a, a white line in there that's got to be filled in. This has to be filled in a bit. All right. All right, so we've got this filled in again. Now you can start to see that reflected light a little bit. And now we're going to do the core shadow again. So this is going to be the darkest. This is just, um, whenever you're drawing something, we always say, what's the value? What's the shape? What's the value? What's the shape? And this is getting to that, you know, this is where we're describing the shape of the core shadow. The core shadow is the darkest shape. It's a, it's a long little triangle. The triangle is going to be darker at the top, getting a little bit lighter down here at the base. There is some of that going on um, as far as that goes. So as this is going up, this is getting a little darker and a little darker and so forth and so on. Um, now this is clay. Now I, 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 I should have mentioned it last time. I'm Quite frankly, I can't remember if I did. So I'm going to mention it now. Um, there's times, depending on the material we're looking at, where we can't see the highlight. The highlight highlights aren't on every, well, they're on every object, but they're, sometimes they're imperceptible because of the material that they're on. 
the highlight melts into the light values. And when that will happen is anything that's made, out of, anything that's got a, a lot of uh, uh, sort of a rougher surface, like a tennis ball, um, you know, or you know, if you if you've got like tablecloths that are, again are made of, you know, the tablecloth is made out of cotton. Well, then it's not going to be shiny, unlike polyester. But again, the uh, the highlights there you don't see highlights on on on, on the uh, on the cloth because they melt into the light values. Um, so anything that's fuzzy, again, cloth, um, if you have a, 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 my, the gourds that I have in the studio, again, you're not going to find highlights on them because of the fact that they uh, have a rough surface. Uh, if you have an apple off a tree, you won't find a highlight, but you get a apple, an apple out of the, the store, you will see a highlight because they wax it. So sometimes it's, it's what the material has is, is, is been coated with. Uh, and so that uh, different rules come into play. So that's why, you know, we've all done, well, I think most of us have done this, where you see this beautiful rock in a stream and you pull it out and then it dries out and it's this lackluster, dull sort of thing. And it has no, you know, it, it's very gray. But if you take that same rock and you, you tumble it and smooth it and polish it, all of a sudden all the color's back. Because you've changed the surface and then you've sealed the surface with a material that is shiny, that reflects a lot of light, and therefore it's easy to see the uh, the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take my eyes out of focus again. I have uh, I have my middle value here that's a little darker, and then I have middle value here that's lighter, and then this is my light value. So again, we're getting these these stretched cones or these you know little sections of this cone. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. Now I'm on the light side, so um, I'm going to use probably my 4H pencil. Um, I'm going to turn this on the side so I can use that that elbow swing. <clears throat> Pardon me. So. <clears throat> Now this object is not white. It's light, but it's not white. So that's why I'm darkening the light values. Now this thing would also have a cast shadow, but you're going to see that in the uh, the video that I'm I'm sending you of the. Again, we got a little crumble there that that's tumbling over. Um, it's kind of fun because these little crumbles have sort of like a little bit of static electricity. So I can just hover this over them. I don't even have to touch the paper with this particular paper and I'll pull them right off because of the the fact, well that one I had to touch, it's a little bigger particle. But anyways, um, kind of kind of wild stack electricity. Um, but I'm not going to worry about the, the cast shadow on this one as much. We're really just going to go ahead and say hey, let's deal with the form shadows on this. Um, so again, the um, a little crumble right there. So we're going to come up here and I'm trying, so I am getting to the point where okay well I need to, you know, towards this point especially we have to be really really clear. We don't want to just you know, throw caution to the wind as someone might say. So we're using a little care. I'm still using sort of a, I'm actually using an elbow swing uh, I've got my elbow hanging on the back of the table, so it may not be very clear right now, but I, I, I'm using the, the table to prop up my arm a little bit. So again, and the reason I'm doing this is it's just going to be quicker. It's still going to take me quite a bit of time to do this, as you can imagine. Um, and if you've, you've seen the, uh, the sphere video, again, you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, what I'm going to have you guys do, by the way, is we're going to have you work on this and then I'm going to have you email me, the info at idahoartclasses.com, and I want you to email me the assignments. That way I can take a look at it and I can respond to it. Okay? So I can see what you're doing. So, now um, I've got, I was going to get in here to my dark tones, but my 4H my pencil. Is just not going to get any darker than this, so I dropped down to a 2H pencil. All right, so I was I, I got my 2H pencil, and 
I'm going in here. Again, this is that paper that has some funkiness going on with it, but I'm going to try to work with it. So sometimes, again, if, as long as there's not like, um, there's, as long as it's not too bad, many times you can take paper that's a little, you know, that has, for some reason, has some idiosyncrasies, we'll call them. You know, it's not pristine for whatever reason. Again, this seems like this got, again, rolling around the studio and being placed here and there and probably just paper rubbing on paper and stuff stacking on it, rubbing the paper against itself again. It starts to, you know, that you don't want to do that. Not on, not on really, you know, on a really nice drawing. So, so anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep working on this, working it out, working and working. I'm trying to make these middle values darker than the light middle values. And right now we're, we're not, we're not getting enough. So again, I'm going to put down my 2H and I'm going to go over that 2H with my HB. All right. So again, if the pencil is not dark enough, grab a different pencil. It's, it's just that simple. So that's what I did. I was like, oh, the 2H. Well, the 2H ain't hacking it. Well, guess what? If it's not doing the job, we're going to grab something that will do the job. And so this HB, is, is, as we can see, is, is definitely getting in there. And it's darkening. Uh, it's, it's, it's making those darker middle values darker like what I wanted. Okay. So... That's what we got going on here, and you're gonna find that I'm gonna to start to start to we're gonna we're gonna to start to layer pencils and stuff like that. Before I get too much farther, I'm gonna get my 4H pencil over here, and I'm gonna go into the darks with my 4H pencil. And again, the reason we do this is, and this will make it darker. And it's not because the 4H pencil is a darker pencil. It's not. It's a lighter pencil. But what the reason is, is this 4H pencil gets in deeper into the crevices, deeper into the into those textures and so this 4H pencil will make it darker because there's all these little white dots here that's the texture of the paper and this 4H pencil but just because of the nature of it being harder it goes deeper into the paper and it turns those light little dots into gray little dots okay and so just that little bit will make this a lot just a, quite a bit darker not a ton but it'll drop it by about a step of value not only that, but it does something else for us, and that is that my 4H pencil, my 4H pencil is, because it gets deeper into the texture, it looks smoother. So not only that, but not only will it darken it, but it will make what's in the darks look smoother than if I don't. If I use just B pencils and HBs and 2Bs and 4Bs in my darks, It'll look considerably rougher because those softer pencils ride on top of the texture a whole lot more. And we want this to seem like it's smoother so than what it is. Now, again, if I was doing something where, let's say this was made out of a felt, a felted, you know, cone or something weird like that, well, then I'd want more texture. And so I may not, I wouldn't, I may not use the, uh, the 4H pencil at all. Maybe I, the lightest pencil I'd be using is a, is an HB or maybe even a 2B so that it would ride on top of the textures and really bring out the texture of the paper. But with this, it's a somewhat semi-smooth surface. Not completely smooth, but semi. And so again, we're gonna go ahead and we're trying to give a nod to the fact that this is, you know, smooth or smooth-like. And so I'm gonna to try to get in there and see how much of the paper texture I can minimize. Again, I'm using sort of it looks like I'm rocking my hand, but again, I was actually uh, using, I'm using a, a elbow swing on this, uh, as far as this goes. See that big long stroke I'm making all of a sudden? Again, that's because I'm using the other elbow, and the elbow is just resting on the edge of the table here, so I can swing it very easily. All right, so again, we're just coming up in here. And we're, you know, we're starting to get a light side, dark side happening here. Um, and again, I'm just using my 4H pencil. Uh, we're going to go over here and, whoops, <laughs> skip, skip. That was, saw that? That was where I was trying to, the, the pencil slip. No big deal. I can erase that little mark that it made. 
Uh, if you can't see that, well then we'll just pretend it didn't happen. How about that? Um, be like when you're, you know, some little kid breaks a, breaks something important. Oh, I didn't do it. Uh, it's not there. Don't look. Uh, so we'll we'll just pretend the same thing with that little dot. Um, we're gonna again build this up a little bit more. This is just my 4H pencil. Now again, I'm gonna um, before I, I come back into the lights, I'm gonna get my 2H pencil, and I'm gonna do the same thing I was doing with that 4H. And the reason I grabbed the 2H is because it's gonna, it is a slightly darker. Um, it's not as dark as the HB that I was using in here, but in other words, it'll get it won't get near as deep as the 4H into the texture, but it will still get deeper than any other pencil besides the 4H. Plus, it'll make it a little bit darker because it'll make those little dots into even darker gray dots. And so again, I can I can use the, the 4H and the 2H to go into these dark areas and you use it to smooth things out. Some people will call it polishing. Um, not a big fan of that particular term, but you know, that's all you're doing is you're going in there going, okay, we're gonna make this look a little smoother than what it is. If I was trying to you know draw something and make it look like a ball bearing, Again, I'd be using a whole lot. I'd be, I'd be using my other pencils too, but I'd be going over those the HBs and the 2Bs and the 4Bs with a whole lot with my 2H and 4H to again keep it nice and, and uniform and and smoother than if I didn't do that. Again, we're just starting to get sort of this core shadow developing. Um, I got to start looking back up at the object. I'm I've been focusing here, trying to work so fast. I I, I do have this object set up in front of me, and you can't see it. Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to send you the the sphere and the cube to work on at, at home because those are the two uh, main shapes. Uh, and I just wanted to show you this is how this would apply, and the you know the to kind of emphasize the whole working back and forth with the different pencils, how that would work. So again, we're going to go ahead and and this is you know, my core shadow, my core shadow opens up a bit as it comes down. It also gets a little bit lighter as it comes down because of you know reflected light and all this good stuff. So we want to give a nod to all that. We don't want to ignore that. That's important stuff. That relationship is important. Now I should this is I, I probably haven't said this if I but even if I have it bears repeating as some people might say. I'm gonna come into my lights a little bit, try to get a little bit of a gradation. But the thing I was going to say is that there's levels that we want to have, levels of importance. And the, the, the primary importance of an object is to see a light side versus a dark side. So if you can see that, that's, that's the first level. That has to be the first thing you see. Light side, dark side, shadow side, light side. And then what's the shape of the shadow? What's the shape of the light shape? You know, so there's a, there's a whole thing in, in drawing where they constantly are saying, what's the shadow? What's the shape? What's the shadow? What's the shape? And it's just to understand, you know, again, the clearer you are, the more information, the, the better the object will read, as we will say many times in, in the uh, art biz, meaning that you can tell what it is. That's just an, another way of saying, yeah, I can tell. And the way you're going to be able to tell is by making the sure that the shape of the shadow and the shape of the light are as correct as you can possibly make them. If I've got someone like, you know, Uncle Milford or someone like that, or... So down the street or block away, I, I'm going to rec and I can recognize him. The re reason I recognize him isn't because I can see that scar that he got when he was a young man, or not because he's missing half an eyebrow or something like that. The thing that's going to sh that you're going to recognize is his basic overall shape, and most likely the basic shapes in his face as the shadow wraps the basic features of his face. You're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's my uncle so and so. Um, it's not till they get you know just a you know, a few feet from you that you'll start to see things like eyebrows and, and scars and, you know, they might even have to be right right close to you to even see that, you know, the, the nuance of that sort of stuff. And so shape is a powerful thing that many times when we begin to draw, we discount how important it is. We think that the, that the, what makes something look like something is in the details and it's not. If you can actually get something correct with the form shadows, it says more than detail because it actually describes the little details with the actual basic shadow shapes. So that's the first layer, that's the first level. What's the shape of the lights? What's the shape of the shadows? This is pretty simple. It's a, this is a sort of a triangle here and a triangle here. As we get into drawing more advanced and intermediate advanced and things like that, 
you know, people and stuff like that, the, the shadow shapes become much more nuanced. They be, you know, the shapes become much, you know, much more, you know, intermediate and advanced, a little, a little more difficulty than just something really simple. <clears throat> Pardon me. But the same thing applies. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this. So this is my 2H that I'm using here. And again, I'm trying to get this just a little bit darker. Now, I'm gonna come back in here again because I don't think the shadows are quite where I need them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop into an HB. So I'm gonna grab this HB here. And now I'm just trying to get, I'm trying, there's this edge is kind of uh, not uniform. It's not straight enough for me. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go along here and I'm gonna try to, and maybe this is the time to, now I know this is upside down, but it's a little bit easier because I want it darker here and lighter here. So I'm gonna spend more time down here so it makes sense to invert it like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if I can get this, this edge to be a little straighter. Okay. And not only that, but again, this needs to, you know, we, we it, it is a, a light little triangle coming out, is it? Now, right now, this this looks, you know, almost like this is a pyramid. There's no, there's there's no, none of the gradations just yet, but we're gonna we're gonna start working that in. Okay. And again, sometimes people think, well, geez, why would I do this? There's so much more fun stuff to draw. And uh, I certainly understand that. There was a time, you know, if you'd sat me down in high school and I mean, I'd like to think that I was, if you'd explained it to me, I would have been like, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. But I don't know. I was, you know, we were all young once and perhaps, and we probably weren't near, near as understanding as we might remember or think ourselves to have been. And I was pretty hard headed. I mean, there's, there's no, no two ways about that. So Sometimes you're like, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to, I want to go on to the good stuff. I want to go on to the advanced stuff or the intermediate stuff. I want to get to the challenging stuff. I want to, and I understand that. I really get it. I really do. Because I've been there. You know, drawing is a process. Everyone starts sort of in the same place. And you don't want to be drawing this stuff forever. And uh, obviously, but this is a, a means to an end, as people would say. So it isn't just to draw the cones because, you know, Cones are the most important thing. I mean, well, they are on some level, but the the reason that we draw this is so that if we're drawing something like a pear, the top of the pear is a cone. The bottom of the pear is a sphere. Now, they're not perfect spheres nor perfect cones, but they have those basic, you know, con conoid, if you want to use a, a term, but they're cone-like, a cone-like shape with a sphere-like shape. And if I can't, if I, if I know what the value is on a cone and what the value is on a sphere, I'm going to be more likely to draw a, a, you know, a much better, a much better pair. You might say, well, what if I don't want to draw a pair? Well, you know, anything that we draw in this class, whether it be, we have things that have modified cones all the time. Uh, there's times the cone begins to bend a little bit. I have an oil decanter here that people will sometimes draw. And again, it's it's a sort of a, there's a part that's sort of a, a modified bent cone. And again, if you understand the cone bending, it's no big deal. You can, again, much more easily draw that shape. And it's something that when everyone draws it, they have a really tough time with it. Again, the, the answer in the intermediate and advanced drawing is understanding your fundamentals. And if you could imagine someone going, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with, you know, you know, getting the piano fingering just right. I, I, you know, I don't care about how clean I, I I'm hitting the keys, and I, I don't want to spend all my time in understanding, you know, this or that. And they're trying to, you know, play something like Bach or Mozart or something like that, and and it's not gonna, it's not gonna sound very good if they're fumbling over the keys and they, they're not hitting the keys really clean, and and they're, you know, they're stumbling over it because they never took the time to anchor their basics. And that's the same thing with drawing. I get people in here all the time, they're like, well, I wanna, you know, I wanna level up. I wanna get my drawing better. I wanna get my painting better. What do I need to do? And I'll start trying to take them through these fundamentals and, and some people are just like, oh man, nope, 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 nope. I wanna do it without that. And it's, it's, and it's like trying to get, you know, people to, you know, like the people that are trying to, 
you know, slim down without, you know, changing their diet and exercise. And I mean a, a healthy diet, not a fad diet. You know, there's, you know, we, for whatever reason in society, we want the easy fix. And I understand the lure of that, but, you know, as you get older, and, and I understood a little bit when I was younger, but I understand it more and more and more the older I get that, you know, the things that grandpa would say, like, you know, there's nothing, nothing worthwhile is free. And, you know, it's all about the journey and, you know, it's all about, you know, sticking to it and all that stuff. And dang it, if he was, he wasn't right. He was right. I just didn't want, you know, that sounds, you know, too much like work, but it is work. But if you love it, it's not work. And that's that whole adage that, you know, find something you love because then work will, will fly by. It won't seem like work at all. And that's how I feel about this stuff, that the drawing doesn't seem like work. I mean, it, it is hard work. You have to put in, you know, you, even if you're doing it, you know, as a, as a hobby, you still have to put the time in, you know, and, and you, have to, you have to build some discipline no matter what level you're at. If you're doing it, you know, at a level like me, well, then it's, it, it, it's basically a lifestyle. There's no... Uh, you know, nine to five sort of aspect to it, but not, you know, I understand not everyone's doing it like that. Everyone's, so if you're doing it, you know, like I'm, I'm a, like if I'm a weekend artist or something, again, you're doing it every weekend, uh, you're going to grow more fat you're going to grow faster than the person that goes, oh, I'll do it every other weekend or I'll do it once a month. And so, you know, and then there's, you know, I, I know people that, that like this stuff and, and they're doing it every day. Like, you know, instead of, you know, building planes or, doing other types of hobbies they're they're drawing on a daily basis for an hour or two they do it to relax they do it to enjoy things and again they're going to get a lot better a lot quicker than the person that's doing it only once a week so it really is a numbers game we uh, you know sometimes i understand not wanting to to have to think about the fact that it really is a numbers game but it is the more time we put into it the better we're going to be now, right now, I've been working with the, with the shadows to keep the shadows correct, but we re I need to really work with getting some transitions because right now this looks like, again, almost like a pyramid. So we're going to start doing gradations in the lights. Now, the lights also don't quite have the, the middle values, dark, the, the dark middle values dark enough. So that's where I'm really going to spend most of my time is in this middle value area. And, again, I'm not taking as much time as, as, I, would, as I would like because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't want to turn this into a six-hour video. This is already going on something like 47 minutes or something like that. But, and again, I understand if you're, if you're, you know, uh, fast-forwarding through it or what have you. But again, I'm going to try to get this to turn the corner. In other words, have a gradation from the uh and, and i'm coming along this thing and I'm, I'm pushing out a little bit so i'm doing the one where i'm coming out a little bit and i'm coming out a little bit further and i'm coming out a little bit further and i'm coming out a little bit further that's how i'm dealing with this and that's how we're going to make this gradation start to happen it's just like we were you know doing in, in you know the very beginning where i was showing okay this is how we do a value gradation that's exactly the the, the technique i'm going to use and so I'm continually, you know, pushing this out a little further, pushing this out a little further, pushing it out a little further still. And I want to be doing that. That's how this is going to start to come to life, as people might say. That's how we're going to get this. This right here, this, it gets a little bit of a, it's bleeding here, but it's not here. In other words, the gradation here, but not here. So I need to work a little bit harder. I'm going to come off a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further still, and a little bit further still, the further I get down, because this is supposed to be a triangle. You know, a triangle of these of these darker middle values, and right now they're just not. They also need to be darker up here, middle, and lighter down there because they reflect the light. So I'm trying to keep all these things in mind. That's I know it's got to be happening, and and I'm also looking at the object. I'm glancing up the object constantly, a little bit more now. But I'm trying to. If I wasn't having to talk every minute, I'd really be. You want to be looking at the object half as much as you are actually at the at the drawing itself. So. 50% of the time you're actually observing the object and the other 50% of the time you know you're constantly glancing back and forth and if you do it right well then again 50% of the time is looking at the object and the other 50% of the time is doing the drawing because this is supposed to be based on um, observation we're supposed to be observing this sorts of stuff and we're starting to get just a little bit of this uh, gradations happening And that's, that's a good thing. That's what we want. I'm looking up here, looking down here, looking at the drawing, looking at the object, looking at the drawing, looking at the object, working my values. 
you know, we're starting to get, you know, it's, it's we're starting to get a little bit of a, of a gradation, which again is what we want. We want a little bit. We don't want this to seem like this 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 edge through here, which it's still. I can. I'm looking at the. Um, I have to remember again the camera doesn't pick up as much nuance as our eyes. Sometimes people don't realize that the camera does have a lot of limitations that we don't realize when we're first, you know, when we start drawing. The the human eye is, is pretty pretty fantastic in, in, in what it can do. Uh, we used to be in some class and they talk about it in, in color theory about how the eye can you know respond to like. I'm trying to remember how I put it because the, the, our, our instructor was a was a, a he, he did physics for a, a hobby that was his hobby besides art was he did physics and mathematics and I think it was that the eye can, we responds to let me pull this back up here the eye responds to like a photon moving back across the eye it's pretty pretty wild stuff so again I, I'm I'm trying to get this to come further and further out further and further out. And I'm trying to make sure that this gradation, like right now this is pretty flat through here. So I'm trying to make this gradation work right now. And it's not it's, it's not there yet, but we're getting close. We're starting to get, you know, again, we're starting to get a gradation in the lights. Now, as I make the lights darker, that means the, the, uh, the shadows are gonna start to lose their power. So as this goes darker, this is going to seem lighter. So I'm going to at some point I have to come back and darken this. So again, that, that the relationship is still clear, that this should be light and this should be shadow. Oh, those three levels. I didn't finish that thought, and I apologize. I got off on a tangent. So the first thing that we want to do is light and dark. That has to be implicit. You have to be able to, you know, where you go, yeah, that's the light side, that's the dark side. Then the second thing to make an object look realistic is the form shadows. All the, you know, in-between stuff, the, the middle values, the light middle values, the... You know, the light tones, all this stuff, that's very, very important. Uh, we want that stuff. It's going to really work to, to make the drawing do what we want. Uh, and then the third level is, is uh, detail, and detail conforms to the first two levels. So what that means is that detail conforms to form shadows. And what happens is that people just start focusing, hyper-focusing on details, and they forget the form shadows, and they, they, they're like, why does my thing look flat? Why does it look terrible? Why does it look like a, you know, some sort of you know, stylization or a cartoon or something? And it's because um, the fact that they ignored the form shadows and the fact that they ignored the light and dark. Again, the first thing it has to read, light and dark. It's the first read. If you can't read that, if that's not clear, you need to clarify it. The second thing that needs to read is the form shadows. Oh, that's a light value. That's a middle value. That's a that's a that's a highlight shape. That's a that's a you know core shadow if it has one. Oh, that's a dark tone. Oh, that's reflected light. That has to read second. If you can't read that, and what happens if you start putting details everywhere? It'll start to flatten out the object. And then you go to detail. And here's the thing: detail conforms to form shadows. So if I've got details in the light values, they're going to be blown out a little bit. They're going to be soft. And then those details get a little darker in the middle values. And then those details kind of dissolve as they go into shadow. So if I put like little marks here, they're supposed to be details. Let's say this is made out of wood and I put grain. And I put the grain here is the same value as the grain line there. And the same ground, the grain line is the same value in contrast here. Then it's wrong. You'd see the grain the most here, and then it would the, the values would bl be blown out in the lights, and they'd dissolve in the shadows. And so that's the importance of details. They have to conform to what's going on with the light and shadow and the form shadows. So light and dark, you know, those have to, if, if I got so much detail there and, and stuff in the way that I can't see what's light and what's dark, I destroyed the illusion. If I've, if I've put the details on wrong and they ignore the core, uh, if they, not the core shadow, but if they ignore the form shadows, Again, it's wrong. It starts to flatten. Detail will flatten form. And people that are good hyperrealists, because there are certainly people that are bad hyperrealists, uh, the best ones understand that. And they make sure that the details conform to the form shadows. You have to, or you'll be ended up with the most mediocre, lackluster, you know, photoreal or hyperreal picture you could imagine. 
It, it's something that you have to be, now I'm doing a finger swing in case you, you caught that. We're trying to get a little bit more uh, control on this thing now. So I'm still, I'm not doing the feathered stroke yet. I'm just doing side to side with, you know, um, so I'm using my fingers. Now I'm not, I'm not doing a very big swing, but I am doing a finger swing at this point where I'm just moving it back and forth. This isn't that tapered or feathered stroke or gradated stroke, whatever you want to call it. We're not there yet. Value is the holy grail in drawing. It's, it's, it's what we want to master. And again, I've had some people that um, have taken my classes and then they like, you know, think somehow they've got, they've got an answer or they think, hey, that's, that's not the way it works. And that, that's, you know, this isn't, I'm going to go a different direction. And you're certainly free to do that. But I'll guarantee you, if you continue, you're going to come back to this, to the, what I'm talking about eventually. And I've certainly done that. Uh, again, everyone, I, I tell everyone that artists all start at the same place. And because I was a, a hard-headed knucklehead uh, as a young kid, hard-headed and stubborn, and I didn't want to, you know, oh, that's not the way it is. I, got, I think I have a better idea. I don't know why, but I thought I knew it, you know, knew a better way. Or I figured I could figure out a better way to what I was being taught. Because obviously, you know, there was something, I, I mean... There's reasons for it. There was something that I thought was going on that I couldn't understand that I felt had to be in play. And so I would, I would go ahead and I'd try that. And I, um, I, I did a couple of those where I did it over and over and over and over again. And I figured out, no, I was actually doing a worse job figuring out what I was trying to, to the place I was trying to get at. So I came back to, to the methods I was being taught and, and, and realized, no, this is the better way. This is the way. And that I was just being ridiculous to think that it wasn't. And so I actually, have, I've actually, you know, tried to break the bounds. I've tried to actually do things differently than what they are. All right, we're so we're going to continue on. We're almost, we're almost there. This is starting to the illusion starts to happen. All right, so I'm just going to continue on. I think I have, yeah, this 4H pencil. Uh, and again, we've got enough that we can start to see gradations through the shadows. Again, this is a little rough. If I had done this, I would be taking more time. But again, I, I don't want to make this into a six-hour video that you, you know, just, well, I mean, it might help you if you have insomnia, but no one's going to be able to endure watching the whole thing. And again, you don't have to, you don't, you know, this was, uh, so this is just extra. Again, you could just watch the, uh, the sphere one. Now the sphere one again. The sphere didn't get didn't get finished. I wanted to take this to a little bit higher level of finish than that sphere, because with the sphere it was just barely starting when when I when I quit uh, working on it. And I was thinking I was like 27 minutes in. I think we're like 48 minutes in. And so now there was some some lecture in there too that probably took up 17 minutes of it, but or maybe even you know, more. But the idea is is that. I need to do this enough. Now again, I'm using this 4H because I don't want this to get too dark. I just want to be able to sort of bump the value here and bump the value there. Um, that 4H I'm using though is too light. So I'm going to come back here for the core shadow and I'm going to just darken the core shadow just a little bit more through here. Not as much down there, but through here. So. And it's, I'm not making it super dark, but I want it a little bit more, a little more richness. In other words, a little bit darker values. Sometimes when I say richness, that, and I'll say it a lot, um, but I start to catch myself because sometimes people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, uh, I mean value. So if I say something, I need the value to be a little richer, I mean darker. Or the contrast to be a little, a, bit, a little brighter contrast. Contrast is the jump between light to dark. So what's the jump between this value to that value? That's that's what contrast is about. Or what's the jump between this value to that value? Again, that's that's what contrast is about. And so I certainly want to be giving a nod to some of those ideas of contrast and value and relationships. It's always about relationships on this. It's always, always, always. And I'm constant. I'm looking. And by the way, I told you guys um, the way to look up for value is to. And if, 
This is, again, it's always good to repeat yourself. The way to check values is to take your eyes out of focus. The way to look at values is to, is to soften your vision and, and look at things out of focus, or squinting, as we, was what you'll hear it called in many, you know, fine institutions that will say squint, 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 the art of squinting. Um, and we're trying, we're trying to, again, make our, our, our eyes blurry trying to blur that vision because when we do that we can see the values. So even when I'm drawing on this this object right through here, I don't want to be distracted by the paper texture. I don't want to be distracted by, you know, some little crumble or something like, you know, I have to take this little sort of darker little notch out of there at some point, but I don't want to be distracted by it. So I'm even, you know, not only am I taking my eyes out of focus when I look at the object, but I'm taking my eyes out of focus as I'm doing my drawing to make sure that my basic values are correct. Again, if you don't, you'll be too distracted by the paper texture. You'll be too distracted by other things that don't matter near as much as the form shadows. And the form shadows are, some people would call them omni-important. I mean, they're, they're just, they're, they're overriding. They're, they're so important, we do not want to, you know, we don't want to ignore them. They're just, they are that important. We're just barely starting to get this illusion to start to happen. You know, there's a little bit of a crumble here. Again, I don't know why the paper's doing that, but again, I can work with it. So, so I don't want you. I just want you to understand that I, I, if you can take meter, mediocre paper and I could, I could blot that out. I wouldn't do it now, but I, once it's almost finished, I could take the eraser and get a little pinch out a little, little beak and take that out and soften it down. But we're starting to get this, you know, the illusion happening where this is starting to feel three dimensional. Starting to, it's starting to, our eyes are starting to be tricked by, by the form shadows. Where we can identify the form shadows that we are used to seeing. That's why all this works. Is, is we don't understand what we're seeing, but we take for a granted, or we take for granted what we see, because we've seen it so much that we kind of have, people will call it intuitive. And I believe intuition is really just previous experience. You know it looks right because you've seen it so many times that you have, sort of a feel for it. But if you, you know, if you, if you, you know, didn't, uh, if you didn't have that previous experience, it wouldn't, you wouldn't understand whether it was right or wrong because you just didn't have that previous experience. Uh, kind of like a person. I remember this. Uh, I used to be in choir back in high school, you know, and, and I, I like to sing. Anyone who's taken my classes has, you know, for good or bad, heard me singing along in class and and having a good time. And I, I think, you know, you know, it's life's too short to not have a good time, right? Uh, let's enjoy this stuff. This is what it's all about. This is the good stuff. This is, you know, why we do it is because it's enjoyable. Um, why wouldn't we want to, you know, ha have some fun? So, um, but yeah, so they've heard me sing a little bit in class and things. And, uh, and I remember uh, when I got to high school, I wasn't, I was, wasn't doing as much. I still, you know, sang around the house. I had a lot of people that in our family that sang. And, and so I came from a really sort of creative family that way. Lot, lots of singing, lots of uh, you know, lots of um, sort of, you know, skits and, 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 and drama and, and, and people doing acting and musicals. And, and of course, I was doing my art thing by the time I got in high school. But I, my last year, my, or my first year of high school, pardon me, was my last year that I took, you know, sort of a, a serious choir class. And the instructor was telling us this, this wonderful story about this, this, this young lady that he had encountered that was not raised around music. There just, there wasn't a radio at home. Uh, no one's saying at home. They, uh, you know, they're just. She wasn't exposed to music, so, you know, as far, as far as that goes. Very little exposure, and so because of that, she had uh, no tone range. He, he would try to play different keys, and she couldn't quite distinguish, the, you know, the difference or how to distinguish the difference. And when she sang, she was she would sing in the same monotone uh, note. And she wanted to learn and, and, and just really desired. That was the thing she just wanted to do more than anything in the world was she wanted to learn to sing. And he worked with her and worked with her and worked with her. And he talked about how hard it was. And the first thing he had her do was just to get a radio and start to, you know, listen to music and, and, and start getting, you know, an ear for it. And the more that he worked with her with her voice and the, and the piano and trying to get her to expand the range of her ability to make notes, uh, the, the better she got. But she really had very little, so little experience that it, 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 re, it, re, it affected her even more than what you'd think of. I mean, someone where they can't sing but one note, 
because they, they weren't really exposed to music. That almost seems strange to us. But she worked really hard, and she became, you know, she got into the advanced choirs and, and did some singing. And I, I, I don't know what happened to her. I don't know if, she, if that was just something she enjoyed and continued to enjoy throughout her life or if she did anything with it. I really don't have the information on that. But it was, it was such a wonderful story. And it was such a wonderful story, and I've, I've kind of forgotten what I started with. But uh, the idea is is that um, we have these, quote-unquote, intuitions because our experiences, because we, we can actually see. Um, so uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do in art is we're trying to say, hey, this is why this looks that way. Understand why you're seeing what you're seeing, why it feels that way to you, and then look for it in your drawing, replicate it in your drawing, and once you've replicated it in your drawing, you're golden. You'll have, you know, a nice drawing. So, so this right here again. I'm not deal, I'm not done with the cast shadow. Uh, I haven't, you know, it, it's it's, but it's just enough where we've got the illusion starting to have. We have, I can say, okay, well, this right through here, this is a core shadow, uh, and the core shadow is. I might have to make this a little stronger because again. I don't know if this is catching on the camera because it might melt it into there. If you were seeing this in, in real life, it's, it's soft, but this right here is darker than this over here. So that looks like a core shadow. If we don't have something with a core shadow that's round, it won't look round. If we put something with a core shadow, it will look, it will look round all of a sudden. So again, we want to you know, try to make sure that we've got everything happening. If I have a value that's out of place and not the right value, it'll flatten. So I started working on this corner because it was too light. It was as light as some of the stuff over here and because of that it didn't look like it was in shadow. And and now by putting just a, a quick tone on it, knocking it down, making it darker, it starts to, to read like it's part of the shadow family. The illusion of depth is starting to happen. And it was what was holding it back was this little part. So if something's the wrong value in the wrong place, it won't work. So now that I've got that the right value, I'm gonna I can continue on up. So you're constantly asking yourself, is it the right value? Does it need to go darker? Uh, I usually err on the side of creeping up on something because it's easier to darken something than it is to lighten something. If you, you have to get your eraser in there, you're gonna make it blotchy and all sort of stuff. So it's gonna get a lot uglier before you're gonna be able to then fill in all the blotches and start to make it look better. Um, there's times where there, you have no other choice, but understand that if you it's easier to darken something than it is to lighten something it's like when you're you know cutting molding or cutting a two by four it's a lot easier if it's longer to cut a little bit more off than to cut it too short and try to add some on the end you know that's just that's ridiculous you grab a new two by four um luckily we don't have to worry quite so much about that happening but the idea that it is easier to modify or to to darken a value than it is to lighten a value Again, I've been using that 2B on this for this time. Uh, and again, we're just we're, we're starting to get there. I think we're going to use a 4B just a little bit more. And this will, I'm going to darken just along the core shadow just a little bit more. Again, to give it a little bit more of a feeling of depth. And so we don't want it to be a line. This isn't. I'm not trying to make a line. I'm trying to make a very soft. Now, you might say edge. Well, an edge is not a line. An edge means that something melts into something else. Um, so I do want sort of an edge, but I don't want, I don't want to look just like a line. You got to be really careful that you don't do that. Otherwise, it'll look like someone took a, like a sharpie marker or something and drew a line on on your on your object. But again, if you if you were looking at this in in real life, this would have again definite difference between this value and that value. I don't know if you can tell on the. Just like when that first sphere, I, I showed you that first, the first sphere here earlier. You should definitely be able to see that this is darker than this over here. So we're, gonna, we're trying to do the same thing here. All right, so now we've got something that I think is starting to look again like this cone. Let's go ahead and turn this around. We're starting to feel like you have a dark side, shadow side, light side. Now again, this seems to be a little bit, you know, I, I might need to make it more of a gradation through here, because this seems like it's 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 a line. This seems more like a line, and we need this to be be a more of a gradation. And as this begins to fan out, it will start to feel like we got that, you know, those triangles, these soft little triangles happening, which is because this is a 
a um, cone, we're going to have again these these triangles, just like we had over here. So. I might have to work down here a little bit to get this to make more of a gradation coming off this direction. It's it's really important that you know we start to have this again these same, the, that starts to echo what this is, which is cones. If I'm doing a sphere, you're going to be looking for arcs and you know crescents and things like that, and, and um, you know maybe even elliptical or may, maybe you know. In some cases, spherical. You know, some of the shapes, because they're on a sphere. So this is starting to again feel a little bit better just by again getting this to fan out. Because again, we want that triangular sort of shape fanning out as it comes out a little bit more. So again, now this we don't have an occlusion shadow, but any occlusion shadow would be happening right along here. Right. So, whoops. Again, inclusion shadows start to make stuff feel anchored. And of course, if I was, if I was, um, this would need, and this could probably the whole thing could thicken up. This is probably just a little thin, but. From this point over here, you know, we have a we have a, a light source from this side. Uh, we have a light source from this side. This is my occlusion shadow. You start to have a cast shadow, so you start to have you know something. This is going off the page, obviously. But we'd have sort of this, this, you know, we'd then have a cash out coming over. This direction, and again, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, wait, waste your time watching me make the cash shadow. But the idea is that we, you know, we would have a cash shadow from this object. And uh, we could, you know, we could very quickly create something that would start to honestly going too fast you can see the lines oh you couldn't see that but you can see the lines coming off, off through here because again I need I would need to spend more time again I'd start over here at the darkest part and then we come out a little bit then you come out a little further Come out a little further still. Come out a little further still. Come out a little further still. You know what I mean? You could just go ahead and do that. Make those gradations very, very quickly. And again, I could stay over here more. It'd be a little darker as I stayed along here and so forth and so on. Kind of looked weird without a cast. You got to be careful if you just do something without a cast out. It doesn't look like it's 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 sitting on anything. It's just floating in the air. So again, the cast shadow helps it look like it's actually anchored to something, which is good. That's that's not a bad thing at all. We we want that, right? So and let's see. So. And if we got into this, you know, cast shadow would need to be darker at the front, getting lighter at the back, and all these little nuances and stuff. But again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and and make you, uh, make you watch me. We can dust this off a little bit as far as that goes, and getting away any of the scrapings and all that good stuff. All right. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to take this to the next level, the next hour would be using the 4H and the 2H in here, just to bring this together uh, and make it even more clear what I'm what I'm painting. Pardon me, what I'm drawing. So again, you know, give this a shot. Um, I want you guys to do the sphere and the uh, and the cube. So I'll set that up and send you a photograph of it, and you're gonna have something that's gonna look.
you know, about like this. Okay. And so we're going to have you do that. And then you're going to send me your assignment so I can take a look at it once you're done. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day. This has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes. Bye-bye now.